Hello, my name is Dr. Brenda Christopher. I'm a sports and exercise medicine physician, and I'll be showing you how to approach a patient with a painful foot or ankle today. This is my patient, Chad. Hello, pleased to meet you. Hello, good to meet you. Before we start the examination, it's useful to know key anatomy of the foot and ankle. The anterior talofibular ligament, otherwise known as the ATFL, the calcaneofibular ligament, otherwise known as the CFL, and the posterior talofibular ligament, otherwise known as the PTFL. You should also be familiar with the Taylor dome, the Achilles tendon, the metatarsals, the interdigital nerves, and the plantar fascia. We'll go through the specialized tests of a lateral ankle sprain. Chad, is it possible to lie down for me? And can you bend your knees? That's it. For examination of the lateral ankle and sprains, it's important to know the anatomy. So I'll point out that this is roughly where the ATFL is, the CFL, and the PTFL. So first, I'll palpate the structures to see whether there's any tenderness or crepitus. Is that okay, Chad? Yes. The anterior draw is to assess the integrity of the ATFL, which runs there. With the foot in a relaxed position, I'm going to draw the foot in an anterior position whilst holding down the lower leg. You should feel a firm end point, and if there's any laxity, you should compare to the other side to see whether there's a difference. You can assess the integrity of the CFL, which runs here, with a forced inversion. And again, assess side to side to check for pain or laxity. So depending on the severity of the lateral ankle sprain, you can damage one, two, or all three of the lateral ligaments in the order usually of ATFL first, plus the CFL and the PTFL. If all three ligaments have been injured, then I usually assess the tailored dome for any osteochondral defects and I palpate the base of the fifth metatarsal for a fracture there. To palpate the tailored dome, I start off locating uh, where the dome is. So with my thumb on the lateral malleolus, I work my way anteriorly to the recess. And then this is the anterior joint line where the tailored dome will sit under. And the patient should report tenderness if there's any pathology there and I'd also palpate the base of the fifth metatarsal to see whether there's an associated fracture there. If there's a high-grade lateral ankle sprain and there's a lot of damage down here, I'm worried about the integrity of the fascia that runs in between the tib and the fib. The fascia is known as the syndosmosis um, and you can test that with two tests, the external rotation test where you externally rotate the foot and the squeeze test when you squeeze the tibia and the fibula together. For my assessment of Achilles tendinopathy, I palpate the length of the tendon, feeling for any fusiform swellings, defects, or pain. At the bottom, I also assess either side of the Achilles tendon to see whether there's a bursa or any bony spurs. If I do locate a defect, it's useful to see whether it's part of the tendon, or flexion and extension of the foot. If you're concerned about an Achilles rupture, um, I'd like to do two further tests um, with patients lying on their belly. So the squeeze test should result in plantar flexion of the foot in an intact tendon. An absence of this movement or a decrease of this movement usually suggests tendon pathology. Compare side to side, and if there's a defect, you'll see a reduction or an absence of movement. Another way to assess the integrity of the Achilles is to check for a buoyant endpoint on hyperdorsiflexion. And also observe how the foot falls off the end of the bed. If the Achilles is damaged here, the foot will fall like that, and the normal foot is slightly raised. Next, we're going to assess um, for Morton's neuroma, which is pain that originates in one of the web spaces. It's commonly in the second web space, but it can occur in the third web space. 
A specialised test for this is known as a Mulder's click. A Mulder's click is compression of the metatarsal heads. And here you're eliciting pain or a click. So another cause of full foot pain is the stress fracture of the second metatarsal. To differentiate this, um, careful palpation of the second metatarsal is required. And I'm most concerned about the second metatarsal because a lot of the weight um, during a normal gait cycle um, is transferred through the second metatarsal. The most common cause of heel pain is plantar fasciitis. There are two ways to test for this. There'll be a tender origin of the plantar fascia. Tenderness here is positive for plantar fasciitis. And there will be pain during the windlass mechanism, which is hyperextension of the big toe. A common cause of foot deformity and pain is a bunion, otherwise known as a hallux valgus, where you see a valgus deformity of the big toe. With assessment of the hallux valgus, it's useful to note restriction in range of motion of the first MTPJ, and also any crep crepitus that you might palpate to ensure that the pathology is only confined to the first MTPJ and not the rest of the forefoot. Patients with these pathologies and other less common pathologies will often have abnormalities with general inspection, range of motion and gait analysis. And it's never a bad idea to document these abnormalities. Thank you for watching the Stanford 25 foot and ankle video. Um, please visit the website and subscribe. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.